Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Keith the Guy and we got some fish to fry. And today we're going to be color grading on our iPad once more. But we're gonna be doing something a little bit differently today. Now today we're actually going to be color balancing our footage. And in order to do that, what we're gonna be using today is this little doohickey that you see on the screen right here. Now this is called a color checker. Now many photographers and videographers know about this device. This is a device that gives you accurate white balances along with accurate tones, colors, and exposures. Now, the importance of having something like this is, for example, if you're a beginner and you don't necessarily know where to start, having a color checker would be a great thing to have. Or let's just say you're someone who's working for Vogue and maybe you're working for Dewpoint Registry or wherever the case may be, one of these well-known established magazine companies and they want their colors to be accurate. For example, if I'm selling a expensive Porsche and the color is, you know, navy blue, I want that color to be accurate throughout all screens. So having a color checker will get you those accurate colors and it will help you balance your footage as well. Let's go ahead and do what we usually do and get this color managed properly. So we're going to click on this cog wheel at our bottom left corner and what you will have is DaVinci YRGB. We're going to go ahead and change that over to color manage like we usually do. We're going to turn off the automatic color management. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go all the way down to custom because we want full control of our color management. I used my Canon R5. So we're going to go ahead and go all the way up to the C's where it's going to be Canon Cinema Gamut. Canon Log 3. The next thing we're going to do is change our color space from Rec 709C to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. That's kind of the industry standard nowadays. So we're going to also change our output color space also to Gamma 2.4 and we're going to press save. The first thing I want to do is adjust my exposures and the best way to adjust my exposures is to actually use these exposure tiles down at the third row. Now you have your light bright tile all the way to your left and your darkest tile all the way to your right. And then you got your middle gray, which would be the third tile from the white tile. Now that's going to be the most important tile here but when it comes down to exposure and white balance that middle gray is going to be the most useful so we're going to be in our waveform and we're going to make some adjustments if you haven't already so the first thing we're going to do is adjust our gradical and our waveform i want my waveform to be a little bit brighter than my gradical and then the next thing I'm going to do is go to these three dots, go to waveform scale and change it to percentage. More than likely, you're going to be at 10 bit, but I'm going to be utilizing percentage. After we got that all knocked out of the way, we're going to go into our windows tab. And I already created my isolation window here. We're going to create a rectangle around these six tiles and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to isolate them that way we can only see those six tiles in our frame right now and if you could see at our bottom left hand corner of our waveform you're going to see a little change and i'm going to tell you exactly what numbers these tiles should be at because we're trying to achieve a exposure where our white tile is hitting around the range of 80 and 90 our middle gray tile is going to hit around the range of 50 and then we're going to actually keep that second to the last tile around the 20 to 30 mark and the best way to do that and the simplest way to do that is to go into our color wheels so the first thing i'm going to adjust is my gain it's going to impact my top white tile the most and i'm actually going to be messing around with all of these up until I got them exactly where I need them. So I'm going to keep tweaking around. Okay, we're hitting that middle gray to where we need it. But now we need our, let's make sure it hits the 80. And then you got to be mindful because as you could see there, it's, it's very slight and subtle. 
and then we're going to adjust the middle gray a little bit and then we're going to bring down that ever so slightly so it could hit the 20. Okay. All right. Now we got our exposures accurate and it's that simple. And pardon me for not naming my notes. So this is going to be our exposure node. We're going to zoom out and see what it did. Now, according to the color checker, we have a more accurate exposure. Now, the next thing we're going to do, which is actually the most simplest, is setting our white balance. Remember how I mentioned that our middle gray tile is going to be super important? Well, we're going to be utilizing that to get an accurate white balance. So we're going to go ahead and create another node. And this time I will name it. So we're going to go to this middle gray, which is the third tile to the widest gray. And we're going to go to our color wheels again. We're going to use parades. And we're actually going to take this dropper tool and tap on that middle gray. Now, if you take the dropper tool again and hold on it, you're going to see that our RGB numbers are pretty similar. So after we knocked out our white balance, now we're going to get our hue, saturation, and luminance accurate. And we're, what we're going to be utilizing is these six colors here, our yellows, reds, magentas, blues, cyans, and greens. So we're going to actually switch over to our vector scope. We're going to be needing that. And then we're going to create another node and we're going to name this HSL for hue, saturation, and luminance. And then we're also going to isolate those six tiles. Make sure you zoom in nice and close. So when you make the isolation, it's going to be accurate. We're going to take the pen tool in our window and we're going to create our isolation. Now we're going to adjust once again our vector scope, our graticals, so we can get a better look. Now, as you could see, you kind of got this spider arm looking type of thing. And our goal is to make sure that all these colors are hitting that square. So as you can see, the R, the M, the B, the C, the G, and the yellow. And of course, those are acronyms for their colors. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to our curves tab. And then you got your hue versus hue and our hue versus sat. So we're going to go ahead and get these colors into their appropriate squares. So we're going to start off with our red and we're going to rotate it to its center. And then we're going to go to our magenta. We're going to rotate it to the centered. Our blue is good. Our cyan's good. Our yellow's a little off. So we're going to tap on that and we're going to center it a little bit more. So now we got our hues a little bit accurate and we're going to be going back and forth, make sure that we're dead center in the square. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our hue versus saturation and adjust our up and downs. So we're going to go into our red. So it's saying the red's a little bit too saturated. So boom, we got our reds in the center. Now we're going to go and attack our yellows. Our yellows is kind of already in the center, so we don't have to do too much there. Our green is way off though. So we're going to have to put that in the center as well. Now we're going to our cyans. We're going to get that smack dab in the center too. Our blues and our magenta. And that will get you an accurate hue and saturation. So we're going to go ahead, go back to our windows and turn off our window. And now if we pinch out, we have a properly saturated and properly hueified image here. So now that we have a person in the shot, let's go ahead and get our skin tones accurate as well too. So we're going to go ahead, tap on this. We're going to name it skin. And if you haven't guessed it already, we're going to go back to our color checker and our skin is going to lay on this second row of our tiles, which has all these different skin tones added to it. And of course, I'm sounding like a broken record, but you already know what we're going to do next. We're going to take that pen tool. We're also going to isolate our skin tones. So now that we got our skin tones isolated, we can pinch in a little bit more. 
And as you could see in the vector scope, you see that little line coming to the center. That's going to be our skin tone indicator. If you turn it off, that line is gone. If you turn it on, you got your skin tone indicator back up. And that's basically telling us this is where our skin tones should lie. So we're going to actually go into this tab, which is called the cutter slice. And as you can see, there's a dedicated tab called the skin. Now we're going to be utilizing this to adjust our hue and our saturation of our subject's skin. So if you go to where it says hue, we could simply adjust it until we're at the center. Now, if you go way to the left, you're way off. If you go way to the right, you're making your skin way too red, but we're not trying to overkill here. We're just trying to get it in the center of the indicator. And then as you can see, it's only showing your skin tones. So whenever you dabble with any of these tabs, it shows you what color you're affecting. So if I go to yellows, you see it's only hitting the yellow square. If I go to reds, it's only hitting that red square. If I go to green, it's only hitting that green square. So you know that this color checker is accurately coming for the appropriate colors. Now we're only utilizing this tab for our skin. So we're going to turn off our window and now we have an accurate skin tone as well. And that is how you properly color balance your footage. This color checker is super clutch. I'm gonna leave a link down below so you guys can utilize it. Now, whenever you're editing on an iPad, understand you're not editing on a dedicated monitor. So having a color checker can actually make you feel a little bit more confident when it comes down to color grading on an iPad. So if you guys ever plan on grading on an iPad, I highly recommend that you guys get this color checker. If this video was beneficial, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe, and I catch you guys on the flip side.